This basic electricity training covers a non-mathematical approach to understanding the principles of electricity. It introduces current, current flow, voltage, and resistance. Previously, we talked about dynamic electricity. Dynamic electricity is the flow of electrons in a circuit or electrical system called current. Current is the jump of negatively charged electrons from atom to atom. An electrical current can also be likened to the quantity or volume of water flowing through a hose. With water, we would measure the volume of the water flowing through the hose over a certain period of time, like gallons per minute, for example. With current, we measure the number of electrons flowing through a conductor over a period of time. Current is measured in coulombs per second, which is called amperes or amps for short. Amps are represented in equations by the letter I. When discussing current, the direction of flow needs to be considered. There are two theories behind current flow, conventional current flow and electron flow. When Benjamin Franklin was studying charges, the structures of atoms and atomic particles were unknown. Benjamin assumed the point of charge accumulation as positive and the point deficient of charge as negative. Therefore, charge is said to flow from positive to negative. This is called conventional flow. But in reality, an electric current is nothing but the flow of electrons. Electrons are negatively charged particles and are attracted towards the positive charge, flowing from negative to the positive. This is the actual direction of electron flow. Even though it has been determined that electron flow is the correct theory, the conventional flow theory still dominates the industry. Either theory can be used if the orientations remain consistent. For electrical current to flow, voltage is the electrical pressure that must be applied to a conductor to free electrons. Voltage behaves like a pushing force, forcing electrons to start moving in the same direction, which creates an electric current. Voltage is measured in volts and represented by the letter V. In our water analogy, voltage is equivalent to the pressure used to force the water or current through the hose. The higher the pressure of the water, the higher the flow and vice versa. There are two main types of currents, direct current or DC and alternating current or AC. With direct current, Voltage forces the electrons to flow continuously in one direction through a closed circuit, like runners racing around a track. This type of voltage is called direct current, DC voltage. Batteries and DC generators produce DC voltage. During the early years of electricity, direct current was the standard in the US, but direct current is not easily converted to higher or lower voltages, and thus would not travel well over long transmission lines. For that, we use alternating current, or AC, with this method, voltage forces electrons to flow first in one direction and then in the opposite direction, a certain number of times per second, 60 hertz here in the US. This type of voltage is called alternating current AC voltage. A generator is used to produce AC voltage. The voltage generated by utility companies for our home, factories, and offices is AC voltage. Resistance refers to the force that opposes the flow of electrons in a conductor. Resistance is like the width of the hose in our water analogy. The thinner the hose, the higher the resistance, and the harder it is for water or current to flow through it. Resistance is measured in ohms. In general, there are four factors that affect the amount of resistance in a conductor. Material. We know that the amount of electron flow depends upon how readily particular atoms give up their electrons and accept new electrons. Materials that permit this are called conductors. Copper, silver, and aluminum are considered good conductors. Materials that don't readily give up electrons, which restricts the flow, are called insulators. Rubber, glass, and porcelain are considered good insulators. Conductors and insulators perform a very important team function. An electrical cord to a lamp, for example, has a copper wire conductor on the inside with a rubber coating insulator around the outside. Free electrons flow along the copper wire to light the lamp while the rubber coating keeps the free electrons inside to prevent shock and other problems. Length. The longer the conductor, the more resistance in the conductor. Resistance is increased or decreased in proportion to the conductor's length. For example, a two foot long conductor would have twice the resistance of a one foot long conductor of the same type. Cross-sectional area. As the cross-sectional area of a conductor increases, the resistance decreases and vice versa. For example, if the area of a conductor is doubled, the resistance is cut in half. Temperature. As the temperature of a conductor increases, the resistance increases. 
temperature is not as predictable as the other factors, but it must be considered when dealing with electricity. Electrical products that must take temperature into consideration during design include transformers and their temperature rise, and motor drives and other enclosed products and electronics.